today I'm going to talk about lesson five in my Brooks Point Lace Workbook. And I'm going to look at this little heart motif edging and how to start it. And then at the end of it, I'll discuss going on to the corner, which is the next lesson. But I won't actually work that, but I'll show you if you've got to grips with the edging, how to work the corner, and we'll discuss it from there. The pattern takes 17 pairs with extra for the corner, and I'm using Presenthia Finca number 80, which takes 17 pairs, and Cotton Pearly number 8 for one pair of gimps. I'm going to start the pattern at the head side, which is the shaped edge on the outer edge. In Bucks Point in the UK, we work that on the left hand side and the foot side on the right, which is the edging that you would attach to fabric. I'm going to start off with hanging two pairs of passives side by side so that they're parallel. They're going to be the passives in the head side. And then I'm going to start off with a pin in the first pico hole. And this is going to be a false pico. So these are hung, hung on in open formation. And put five twists on one of the pairs. And then cross stitch them together. As you do with all false picots. When you've worked the, first, the false pico, Cross stitch the two pairs through the two passives. The first pair that comes through is going to enter the cloth stitch inside the gimp. Now if you're working this as an entire edging to go onto a handkerchief, you would lay this support pin flat on the pillow once you've got the next pin in so that you maintain the loops to do the sewing in, to do the join at the end. I'm not going to do that, I'm just doing a sample for this video. Hang the gimp on a temporary support pin, put two twists on this first passive, first pair from the pico, and take it in through the gimp by lifting the left, take the gimp through, and two twists. Next we need a pair to actually work this first pin with. So again, hang it on a temporary support pin. Now this time I'm not putting twists on before the gimp because as soon as I take that pin out, the twists will come off. And then I can start the cloth stitch. So we cloth stitch those two together. Now I'm actually going to take the worker to the right for the first, the second pin after I put this first one in. So my worker is going to be the left hand pair and that's the one we put the two twists on. Put the pin up and then the gimp support pin can be dropped down and then we cross stitch through. Now hang a second pair for the next pin hole on another pin. Take it through the gimp again and cross stitch that one. Now this time that one can be dropped down and release that pin and tension it up and come back through to the left. The second pin on the left you need a pair coming off the pico. Now we've got three pairs of passives currently sitting in the head side. The middle, the middle one is the one we're going to take out for the pico. The right hand one is the one that's come off the first false pico. So using the middle one, cloth stitch it out to the edge and work a normal pico. A left handed one at this stage. Hopefully you've all got the hang of picos now. If not, check out the video that covers picos in more detail. I cloth stitch that back through the two pairs, two twists before and after the gimp, and then cloth stitch through that one. And all the way down the heart, you're going to add a pair in each time for each of the pins on the right hand side. Just 
hang them on a temporary support bin each time to take them in through the gimp and then wet them in. Don't add them all on before you start because that will get quite untidy on your pillow and you could end up with hairs dropping off all over the place. It's easy to add them as you go. This time when the ore worker comes across, if you notice, if you look at the diagram in the book, this pair, the worker pair this time, actually comes out through the gimp to work the pico on the outside edge. So we've got two twists on, take it through and two twists, cross stitch through the two passives and then work your pico. And then it comes all the way back through two twists before and after the gimp and you can tension it up at this point just to make sure your nice your passives are lying nice and flat at the edge and all the way back through to the next pair to be added in This time we come across and we're going to be leaving a pair out after the pinhole to work the pico. So after we've put the pin up, cover the pin and then this first pair is left out to work that pico on the head side. And when you drop the uh, pairs off the passives, the passives off the support pin, just hold your gimp as you tension them up because this helps to keep the gimp in a straight line and not let it pull in. Sometimes that can be almost a nibbled look if you don't do that. And the second time we come across to this side, we're again going to leave the pair out, but this will work an isolated honeycomb stitch outside the gimp in the head side. So that's going to be left out for that pin in the valley. Hold the gimp as you release it and just tension it up. And this is the last one to come into the point of the heart. And after this you'll be leaving them out on the right hand side of it as well. I say that pair is going to come out, so I've got two twists on and I always leave them out straight away so that you realise what's happening to them. Because it's coming to point ground you put three twists on and if you do that straight away, if you do happen to pick it up you can see the twists and realise you've picked up the wrong pair and that's ready to do something else. Now the point here, you don't bring anything in or out, so we're going to take the worker pair out and then bring it back in. And again you just put the twists on to hold the gimp to the cloth stitch and this makes sure you get a nice sharp point in the heart. Now once I've done this row I've now got to work the head side stitches 
finish the heart. Spare's now left out on the right. Again, to come into point ground, so three twists after the gimp. I nearly forgot to take the pin out there, the temporary support pin. Now I can bring the worker across, but I can't actually work the next pin on the left of the heart until I've done the head side. So the ones we've got left out here, the first one will go out and work a pico. And then it'll work back in through the passives to work the isolated honeycomb stitch. So two twists on because it's going to be honeycomb. You've got two twists on the right hand pair that's coming out and work a half stitch and twist, pin half stitch and twist. The right hand one goes back in through the gimp to twist, would be the next pin here. The left hand one comes out, works a pico, and then drops into the next one. before and after. So now I can finish the heart. Taking that first pair in. And we're still leaving out on the right hand side. And the next pico on the outside edge will be the worker coming out again as we did at the top part of the heart. So this time two twists before and after the gimp to take it out. through the passives and the pico. So this pin we're leaving a pair out for the head side, picos, and we're down to the last pin. One pair goes out to the head side and one pair will drop into the top pin hole of the honeycomb ring below it. So at this point I take the gimps through, they cross which is the opposite to twist, so it's the left over right as a gentle reminder because people do get confused on that and this is the first one of the pinholes so I take that through and that's them ready to work. The other pair that's come out of the bottom of the heart will also go out and work a pico on the edge and then drop into the second hole of the honeycomb ring. So we'll do those now and then they're complete.
The first one will sit in the head side after the work in the pico as an additional passive until it's required further on in the pattern. So we just take it through and let it sit on the inside edge there. And then you've got three passes to work through for the second one. The second one after a pico works back through for the honeycomb ring. It works back through the three pairs and in through the gimp. So those two pairs are ready for the two pinholes here once we've got the ground set up. So right back over to the top and we're now going to add one pair on a support pin for each of these pins. So I'll do that off camera, I'm sure you've all got used to setting up these by now having worked through the book to this stage and I'll come back to you when we get to the edge, the, head, the foot side edge. I've now worked the three point ground stitches and I'm ready for a catch pin at the first pin hole on the inside of the foot side. I hang two pairs side by side for the passives and two pairs open formation. And the inside one, put two twists on those, and the inside one comes through to do the first catch pin. Three twists because it's going into point ground, point ground stitch, and then the pin goes on the inside, the pin goes to the right hand side of the two pairs. The right hand one comes back through, as always, on a foot side edge. Two twists, pin up, work the edge pin, or the edge pair, and put the extra twist on the edge. Back through, ready for the next one. Now I know some people struggle with this. Personally I take it through so it's ready to work this line when I come down. But don't put your pin in. If you put the pin in sometimes it can be confusing and you get the wrong pairs. So take it through, put the twists on and then leave it there. Then you come back to the top of the row and we're working the point ground. As we've done on the previous four patterns. I'll work this block off camera and then I'll come back to show you the honeycomb rings. I've now completed the point ground up to right up to the honeycomb ring. So the first two that's coming off the point ground will go into the ring. Now if you're struggling to work out which pairs it is for any reason, perhaps your pillow's been moved and they've got a little bit jumbled, Look at the direction the pairs are lying and the ground that you've got started and you can see quite clearly that the pairs are lying over the pin they go to. Maintain that angle. So if you're in any doubt, put a divider or a needle on something like this and that shows you the line the pairs go to. So we're going to push the pairs out the way we want to use. Just push those to one side. Use a divider if you want to keep them out of the way, which is one of these pins. This is quite a nice pretty one for those of you who like seeing pretty things. And we take the two pairs in through the gimp. Now they've already got the twists on because they've come in from point ground. So take them through, lift the left, pass the gimp through and put two twists on after it. Now the four pins in the honeycomb ring are going to be worked. The one at 12 o'clock in the centre uses the centre two pairs. The next one on the right will use the right two pairs. The left, the left two pairs. And then the centre, the centre two pairs. So if you get confused again which pairs to use, think of the position they're in. If it's a centre, what's the centre two pairs? Half stitch and twist. Pin, half stitch and twist. And then if you look at the clock face again and say is the pin on the right or the left. Now it doesn't matter whether you do the right or the left next because they're both diagonally downhill. So if it's the left hand one it's the left two pairs. 
You just can't work the right the bottom one until you've worked the right hand. But you can work them in diagonal in the same line as well. So you would work the one at 12 o'clock, the one at 3, 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Or you can work them round as I've done here. It depends which way you find the easiest to follow. Now you've done the four pin holes there inside the gimp, so we're going to take the two right hand ones out for the point ground, the two left hand ones come out to work picos. So take them through the gimp, and wherever it's a ring like this, the gimps must cross each time. If you took them then straight back out, the gimp would be open, you must cross it. So the two pairs coming out from the honeycomb ring on the left hand side, the first one comes out and works a pico at the first pin hole on the head side, works back through the two passives and works an isolated honeycomb stitch in the one in the valley between the two rings with the second pair. Just show that and then we go back to the next honeycomb ring after I've done a little bit more point ground which I think you've all seen enough point ground so I'll do it off camera and it makes the video a little bit quicker for you. You're very welcome to watch the, the point ground on the earlier patterns videos if you need to see it again for a refresher. So I've worked the Pico, brought it back through the two passives, put two twists on, tensioned it all up and then with the second one work the isolated honeycomb stitch. The right hand one comes in through the gimp for the top pin hole. The left hand one goes out to do the second pico in this little block. And then it comes back into the ring to work the second pin hole of the next ring at nine o'clock. So I take it back in two twists on and tension everything up and then I've got to work this block of honey of point ground before we can do the next ring and the next ring will be worked in exactly the same way as that with a pair of the first ground the second one close the ring and then you can do exactly the same and the gimp follows this route round does this ring goes out to the right does that ring and crossing every time between the rings then you work that one that one and then you're back onto the heart i think that's enough instruction for this edging you can now practice until you're happy with this once you get on to the corner you work down as far as the end of the heart and then you turn the pattern or the pillow to 45 degrees to work this. The whole corner is worked at 45 degrees. Once you've worked this section here, you then turn it again and continue down the pattern. Hopefully that will help you. Just follow the diagram for this corner because there's one or two bits that I've changed as you can see on my pattern here ignore the extra pinholes because I have rectified the problems I initially had and you will end up with a lovely piece of lace like this I hope that video has been helpful if you like it give me a thumbs up leave me a comment with anything else you'd like to see and explain and subscribe to the channel so that you hear about all new videos coming soon. I'm working my way through the Books Point workbook and hope to bring most of them, although some of the more advanced ones, once you get onto floral, I may not film, depending on the demand, because a lot of those are very much individual lace makers choice where you put extra pairs in, although I could show you some of the techniques involved as well. 
I'm also doing videos on the Bedfordshire techniques and slowly working my way through some of those as well. So anything you'd like to see, just drop me a message. Hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching. Thank you.